Good afternoon. Just got back from a, um, a German Catholic funeral service for a relative of my wife's. Um, very, very interesting. Um, I've never, never been to uh, a funeral service like that before. Um, it wasn't full-blown Catholic. It was it was uh, German Catholic, and of course, um, when you're talking about German Catholics, Lutherans, uh, you are talking about you know just pretty much Catholic, uh, without some of the more obvious things. Uh, but it it was um, it was an experience. Uh, I'll tell you that. This relative of my wife's um, was very dear unto my wife, and my wife was uh, while this relative was alive. Um, acted kind of like as a caretaker f with her and for her. So, um, you know, I probably shouldn't have gone with because uh, I'm telling you what, <laughs> I'm feeling dreadful. It's been over a week since I got sick. Um, and at first, you know, with the, um, with the fever and the piercing temples and the aches and pains and whatnot. Um, it, it was horrible, but um, <laughs> like in the one video that was done on Monday, I said I could still taste. Well, guess what? I can't taste anymore now. You know, I, I'm more flu-like now than I was well, last week. So this is getting really old real quick. But anyway, anyway, in... Exodus chapter 23. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures. Please read along with me in the scriptures we will be looking at today. Read along with me word for word, verse by verse at the scriptures we will be looking at today. All right. Exodus chapter 23. We want verses 1 uh, on to verse 3. Exodus 23. Thou shalt not raise a false report. Don't lie. Put not thine hand with the wicked to be an unrighteous witness. To be an unrighteous witness. Okay? Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Neither shalt thou speak in a cause to decline after many to rest judgment. Verse 3. Neither shalt thou countenance a poor man in his cause. Verse 2. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. Thou shalt not follow a multitude to do evil. There's this kind of mentality that goes along with a lot of what is called Christian as a um, bandwagon mentality. Now, we as saints, we are supposed to be different. But I find it very, and especially, especially, especially with seeing what I saw today at this funeral, um, You know, we as saints are supposed to be different. We're not supposed to be like the world. And Christianity in concept, right, is supposed to be other than the world. In concept, okay? But in actuality, it's, it's a religious function. It's it's a system of doing something that yet makes everyone the same as the same thing they're trying to be different than. Does that make sense? Hmm? Does that make sense? Because a lot of what is Christianity wants to take itself and meld itself with the world, making no distinction. And when there is no distinction in that which is supposed to be other, then nothing's distinct, right? Right? 
We witnessed quite a few people today and gave witness on to quite a few people today, uh, which, was, which was very interesting. Uh, like I said, this um, was a very interesting whole thing that I um, was able to witness today. But um, in all these Christians that we witnessed today, trying to be other, yet they're acting exactly the same as the world that they are purporting to be separate from. And Christianity, in its, in its entirety, basically makes its boast thereof. That, well, hey, we're no different than you. Hmm. 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 And this thing about majority, the, the, well, since the majority says so, then it must be okay. Um, you know, you check the scriptures. Uh, a lot of the time, the majority is wrong. The majority wanted to kill Jesus. Hmm? The majority decided to go back to Egypt. Hmm? Think about that. Think about that. It, it, it brings me to remembrance about, uh, oh, well, not that, what was that guy's name? Barney Miller. Um, when His Holiness came, uh, uh, came out with the stuff uh, uh, destroying the Trinity. Praise the Lord for that. Uh, that Barney Miller guy, um, that's not his name. Uh, he did a video that was something like um, His Holiness versus 100 Years of Christianity. I forget what that guy's name was, Miller something. But he did a video attacking His Holiness uh, about how His Holiness, you know, who was teaching a right on um, scripture uh, about the Godhead. He, he is right on that. Got to give him credit on that. Uh, His Holiness is 110% right about the Godhead, about who God is, one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body, not three persons. I mean, I don't like the guy, but he's right about the, the Godhead. Okay, he is right about the Godhead, okay? But uh, that Barney Miller guy, whatever his name is, Miller, he, he did a video, uh, something about um, uh, His Holiness versus Christianity. And his whole argument was, the whole of Christianity is Trinitarian. So that must mean it's right. See? I, that's, that's one of the only examples that I could think of on this kind of situation like that. But he, that was his argument. The whole of Christianity is Trinitarian, but the faith that was once delivered to the saints is to say is a faith that worships God, who is our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, one God comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Hmm. But yet, all of Christianity pretty much is Trinitarian. Hmm. So that must mean it's right, huh? That just because the majority says one thing, that means it's right, right? But no. No, the majority is often wrong. Hmm? Today, the majority tells you evil is good and good is evil. But yet us saints, we, we want to tell you what is good and what is evil. Why? Because we have a perfect standard. Hmm? And, and this also runs along the lines of, you know, um, Catholicism, uh, having the... This is a lovely um, idea that, well, if Christ had a church, it would be the biggest one. <laughs> you know, something to refute that real quick. Go to Judges, Judges chapter 7. Judges chapter 7. Judges 7. We want verses 1 on to verse 4. Okay, Judges chapter 7, verses 1 on to verse 4. Then Jer Jerubal, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him rose up early and pitched beside the well of Herod. 
so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them by the hill of Moreh in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, check this out, the people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands, lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. And when you consider Catholicism, who, when you ask a Catholic, or a German Catholic for that matter, A German Catholic at least ought to know that in 1 John chapter 5 that uh, they know that they have eternal life. <laughs> but German Catholicism is just another branch of Catholicism, especially nowadays. Found that very interesting. Okay, but <clears throat> right here. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Why? Lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. And Catholicism, Catholicism is work salvation without assurance of salvation. No Catholic can rightly answer the question whether they know for sure they're going to go to heaven when they die, because that's the sin of presumption, Okay. That's the sin of presumption. That's what it says in their catechisms. And that's even what the German Catholics are believing nowadays, too. Okay? <laughs> it's, it's, it's very, very interesting to behold. But here's the thing. The Lord's like, there are too many people with you. But what's the significance? Catholicism will tell you if Christ had a church, it would be the biggest one. Christ of the scriptures, God our Father, our Lord Jesus Christ, his church, the body of Christ, is the smallest, the least of all, okay? You have billions of uh, brother, you know, uh, last week with the correction that um, I did on the one video, there are like billions or million, billions of Christians out there, okay? Are all of them right? Are all of them saved? Of course not. Of course not. No. No. The church of God, which is the church of the living God, is the smallest, the least of all. Christ has a church. Christ has a body. Yes, he does. It's the smallest. It isn't the biggest. Okay? God's a God of the little guy. He is not a God of the big guy. Why? Because right here. Lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. <coughs> Excuse me. And a Catholic, you know if you're going to heaven when you die? Well, I was confirmed, I was baptized, I had the cookie, I drank the wine, I gave a good confession. Vaunt themselves against me. I've done this. I've done this. I've been confirmed. I've been yada, 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 yada. Okay? And yet they still don't know whether or not they're going to heaven when they die. See, if Christ's church, the, his body, was the biggest, okay, number one, that would be that this is, there are many other places that you can point to in scripture to verify this, that God is a God of the little guy. Okay? I mean, you look at Israel in Deuteronomy, where he's like, I didn't choose you because you were the biggest or the best. I chose you because you were the smallest and most despised. God is a God of the little guy. Okay? God is a God of the little guy. All right? God has a body. He has a church, not a building. He has a body. And it's the smallest. Catholic. Okay? German Catholic. It's the smallest. All right, for you to vault yourself around and say, well, if Christ had a church, it'd be the biggest one. Again, what Christ are you talking about there, buddy? Because that man of sin, the son of perdition, promoting that spirit of antichrist, well, sure, that uh, church is the biggest one because it is antichrist. And what is antichrist? 
to be against and to replace. Okay? Brother, you've still not, you still haven't answered the which Christ are you talking about? You're uh, conveniently sidestepping that argument. But that's, that's for another person who I consider a brother. Love him dearly. He's just messed up on that. Okay? But, yes, Satan has the biggest church building. Yes, he does. Yes, he certainly does. Okay? The God of the scriptures is a God of the little guy. I mean, like I said, you can read, I have never read Deuteronomy chapter 4 on your own time, okay? But see, this idea that the majority rules and that since the majority says so, then it must be right. Again, like uh, like that Barney Miller guy, I, I forget what his real name is, it's Miller something, when he attacked his holiness for the Trinity thing. And he's like, his holiness versus a century of Christianity. And his whole argument was, all of Christianity has been Trinitarian. And he's right. He's right. Christians are Trinitarians. Saints believe in the Godhead. Saints believe in one God who is comprised of spirit, soul, and body because we are made in the image of God. Okay? See, you got you to gotta make this distinction, brother. You got to make this distinction between what Christ you are speaking of. Okay? Because these people, when you talk about Christ, what Christ are they going to think you're talking about? Hmm? And when you start talking about the three-person uh, trinity, you're talking about Catholics. It's Catholicism you're describing. It's the Christ of Catholicism that you're standing for. And that's not the Christ that we serve. Let's continue. Now, therefore, go to, proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And there returned of the people twenty and two thousand, and there remained ten thousand. And the Lord said unto Gideon, The people are yet too many. Bring them down onto the water, and I will try them there, try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, This shall go with thee, and the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, This shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. And he put out a thing about the guys who lapped with their mouth, uh, uh, put their hands to their mouth, and about the others who lapped like a dog, their tongue getting on their knees and whatnot. He whittled it down from what? 10,000 to 300. And he's like, now that's, that's my kind of thing. Where is that? Where is that? Let's keep reading on to verse 7. So he brought down the people onto the water. And, and the Lord said, big, 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 pardon, big, pardon, I got some stuff going on here. Okay. And the Lord said unto Gideon, Everyone that lappeth of the water with his tongue, as a dog lappeth, him shalt thou set by himself. Likewise, everyone that boweth down upon his knees to drink. And the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were three hundred men. 300 men, but the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. Now, right here, <clears throat> in verse 3, it says, And there remained 10,000. 10,000 out of what was what? 20,000? Okay, or 20 and 2,000, right? There remained but 10,000. And the Lord's like, no, 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 that's way too many. And then he sets this up, and out of 10,000, 300 people, okay? And the number of them that lapped, putting their hand to their mouth, were 300 men. 300 out of 10,000, okay? This is this throws back to the thing that, well, if Christ had a big church, a uh, church would be the biggest one. The, all these billions of Christians, give me a break. The church of God is the smallest. Okay, they ain't going to be uh, hundreds of, they, they ain't going to be billions of Christians saved. That's not going to happen. 
Okay, that's just not going to happen. Okay, Christ's true church, the body of Christ, not buildings. Okay, because Christ dwelleth in uh, temples made without hands. Your body, okay? It's the smallest. It's the smallest. Okay? Okay, keep that in mind. <clears throat> and the Lord said on, uh, uh, let's verse 6 again, And the number of them that laughed, putting their hand to their mouth, were 300 men. But all the rest of the people bowed down upon their knees to drink water. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By these three hundred men that lapped will I save you, and deliver the Midianites in thine hand, and let all the other people go every man unto his place. See, God's got a little guy. When you have great numbers, then what can happen? Just like what we've talked about earlier this week with these people who have uh, all the, the world's goods at their disposal. They got it worse than us poor folk because they have something more that they can trip on and exalt themselves over. Okay? All right? God's a God of the little guy. All right? And when you're getting self-sufficient in yourself, thinking that you're something that you aren't really, okay? Don't, don't fall for this nonsense when people start throwing at you, well, you need to come to the ch uh, church that Christ founded. Which Christ are you talking about? Huh? Because Jesus Christ, God our Father, did not found the Roman Catholic Church. Are you mad? Satan founded the Roman Catholic Church, okay? Rome is Satan's church, okay? All right? But this, this mentality that, well, since the majority says so, then the majority must be right. <laughs> Again, that, that, that video that Barney Miller dude did against his holiness and his whole argument was exactly that. Saying about how all Christianity is Trinitarian. And he's right. Christianity is Trinitarian. He's right. The faith that was once delivered unto the saints, we believe in the Godhead. One God. Comprised of spirit, soul, and body. Just like we're made in the image of God. We have a spirit, we have a soul, we have a body. Even you uh, wicked devils are made in the image of God. You have a spirit, you have a soul, you have a body. Even though it's hard to imagine some of you having a soul, but it's the fact. Okay? All right? Psalm 58. Do ye indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do ye judge uprightly, O ye sons of men? Hmm. So, do these congregations, congregations, gatherings of people, do they all speak uprightly? Do they judge uprightly? Hmm? Do they? Majority of the time, no, they don't. Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. Verses 9 on to verse 13. Isaiah chapter 30, verses 9 on to verse 13. 8 on to verse 13, excuse me. Now go, write it before them in a table, and note it in a book, that it may be for the time to come forever and ever, that this is a rebellious people, lying children, children that will not hear the law of the Lord, which say to the seers, See not, and to the prophets, Prophesy not unto us right things. Speak unto us smooth things. Prophesy deceits. See, when you get involved with these phallus houses and in these uh, religions, uh, such as Christianity, um, they have to cater to the public because they are publicly funded. Okay? They are publicly funded. And because they are publicly funded, there's a saying that Brother Alexander once said, um, you, you don't offend the tithers or something like that. 
okay? And you know, when you get into that line of mentality where you don't offend the tithers, that opens you up to this kind of nonsense. Well, I, 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 I can't say anything to offend anyone. I don't want to offend anyone. Why? Why? Because you're afraid of lo losing your finances, aren't you? Hmm? Yeah. Yeah. So what happens? They compromise. They become lukewarm. And lukewarmness makes our Lord sick. Makes him bleh, puke. Okay? Let's continue. Get you out of the way. Turn aside out of the path. Cause the Holy One of Israel to cease from before us. Wherefore, thus saith the Holy One of Israel, because ye despise this word, and trust in oppression and perverseness, and stay thereon. Therefore, this iniquity shall be to you as a breach ready to fall, swelling out in a high wall, whose breaking cometh sudden, suddenly and at, at an instant. And also, Habakkuk, chapter 1. Habakkuk. Please bear with me. I, I am feeling horrible still. <laughs> I'm not out of, not done with this. But, I mean, I'm done with it, but... <laughs> Habakkuk chapter 1, verses 1 on to verse 7. The burden which Habakkuk, the prophet, did see. O Lord, how long shall I cry, and thou wilt not hear? Even cry out unto thee of violence, and thou wilt not save. Why dost thou shew me iniquity, and cause me to behold grievance? For spoiling and violence are before me. And there are that rise up strife and contention. Therefore the law is slacked, and judgment doth never go forth. The wicked doth compass about the righteous. Therefore wrong judgment proceedeth. Ah, clue there, clue there. Verse 1 in Psalm 58. Do ye indeed speak righteousness, O congregation? Do ye judge uprightly, O ye sons of men? Hmm? And you look about in the Tower of Babel. Uh, everybody getting together. When man gets together, what happens? They want to exalt themselves. They want to build towers to reach up to heaven, to make a name for themselves. God's a guy, a little guy, okay? God wants, God wants everyone to be saved. But as we looked at that thing in Gideon, about Gideon in Judges chapter 7, okay, God wants, would prefer small over grand, okay? Keep that in mind. Keep that in mind. The majority, most of the times, dear friends, are wrong. Okay? The majority is telling you evil is good and good is evil. The majority tell, is telling you that abortion is fine. The majority is telling you that sodomy is okay. The majority is telling you that uh, pedophilia is okay. You'd be like, oh, Brad, that's not... Look at Disney. Disney. Look at what Disney's doing today, okay? Check out bro our, our brother, uh, Perfect Standard KJV. He's got a lot of good stuff exposing the Vatican through like stuff like Disney and whatnot. Really good stuff on that, okay? Great, great channel that the Lord gave our brother there, okay? Great channel. But the majority, dear friend, usually is wrong. Usually, not all the time, okay, not all the time, but most of the time, especially in these last times before the redemption of the purchased possession, okay? Verse 5, Behold, ye among the heathen, and regard, and wonder marvelously, for I will work a work in your days, which ye will not believe, though it be told you. For lo, I raise up the Chaldeans, that bitter and hasty nation, 
which shall march through the breadth of the land to possess the dwelling places that are not theirs. They are terrible and dreadful. Pay attention to this. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. Aha. Clue. Their judgment and their dignity shall proceed of themselves. Not a perfect standard, but of themselves. Hmm. What's the standard of Christianity? You say a Bible. No, it isn't. We, we saw today, they, they, they don't even have Bibles in their pews anymore. Okay, they don't. They don't. They are their own standard, okay? Flesh is their own standard. Some Jesuit-trained cemeterian is their standard, okay? Flesh is their standard. They don't have a perfect standard. They don't. They don't, okay? Psalm 58, verse 2. Yea, in heart ye work wickedness, Ye weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. Ezekiel 33. They weigh... Now, look at that verse. Look at that verse. Yea, in heart ye work wickedness. Ye weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. In the earth. Ezekiel 33. Ezekiel 33. Verses 31 and 32. And they come unto thee as my people cometh. We saw this today. And they sit before thee as my people. And they hear thy words. Well, they don't hear their... Today in Christianity, they're not hearing God's words. They're barely hearing a Bible. Okay? But they will not do them. For with their mouth they shew much love. But their heart goeth after their covetousness. And lo, thou art unto them a very lovely song of one that hath a pleasant voice and can play well on an instrument. For they hear thy words, but they do them not like to hear a good shot in the arm, good sound and message. But then when it comes to applying that to your life and living according to a standard other than yourself, they fall short. See, in heart, they work wickedness. With their mouth, like, you know, it's like, what's one of the things, that, what's something that a saint would never do, right? A lot of people will say, well, a uh, saint won't deny the Lord. Uh, you know, uh, when you do contrary to what God says in Scripture, especially for to, today in this dispensation, you're denying the Word of God. Okay? I'll give you an example. You're getting drunk. Scripture says, don't get drunk. You can drink. But it says, don't get drunk. You get drunk, well, guess what? You just denied the Lord. Hmm? Okay? You're getting a little too high on yourself, you know, patting yourself on the back, you know. Yeah, guess what? You're thinking more highly of yourself than you ought. Guess what? You just denied the Lord. There, there are guys, these devils, okay, uh, would never, ever, like that putz from England, okay? He would never with his mouth ever say that there isn't a Lord. But they profess that they know God, but in works they deny him. Okay? These devils, they would never openly with their mouth say that there is no God or that, you know, whatever. But ye shall know them by their fruits, the way they behave, the way they act, the way they live. Okay? That's why they don't want you to be a fruit discerner. Okay? Guess what? Yeah, you... Man. I am a fruit discerner. You know why? Because I have a perfect standard to judge my fruit and yours too. Okay? 
Go ahead. Ju judge me according to the scripture. Go ahead. Please. Please. Judge me according to the scripture. That's why uh, the brethren that uh, I have contact with, I love them so much. So I was at my dear brother from Croatia. That 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 boy, he he he'll get right on me like that. <laughs> he he's like like right right away like Brad, brother Alexander. He's like right away, Brad. Come on, let's talk. Like, oh, you know, praise the Lord. You judge me according to this the scripture. Please go ahead. I'm not see. I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid to be judged by scripture. I'm not afraid. But someone who is not of us, then what happens right away? What are you, a fruit inspector? Uh, yeah, I am. And here's my standard, okay? You're afraid of judgment. Because you, know, you have a sneaking suspicion that the judgment you're going to receive is going to damn you. Okay? Well, yeah. That's why you get these guys like the cross-dressing Calvinists. Like, well, only God can judge me. And taking out of context 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Okay? But see, Christianity, they would never with this say that there ain't no God. But in works, they deny him. Okay? All right? Now also, go to 2 Corinthians 10. 2 Corinthians 10. 2 Corinthians chapter 10. <sighs> Not doing good. Verses 11 and 12. Let such and one think this, that such as we are in word by letters, when we are absent, such will we be also indeed when we are present. Like I have told you on many occasions, if you were to meet me out there, the person that you see here talking to you, ranting and raving, hooting and hollering, okay, sometimes, yes, the same person that you see here doing this is the same one you will meet out there, okay? It's, this is who I am, all right? I'm not putting on a show. This is not a performance, okay? I've been accused of that, unfortunately, but go, go ahead. Yeah, these are, these are guys who say, don't judge me anyway, and they're all usually sleazy believers, devils anyway. But, okay, I've been accused of that. That's not the fact. It's not true. The person you would meet out there is the same one that you see here, okay? We're one and the same, because I am one person in Christ Jesus, okay? Just one person, all right? I don't put on a facade, none of that nonsense, okay? Christianity is everything like that, though. It's a facade. Verse 12, for we dare not make ourselves of the number. And this is exactly what Christianity did, does. That's what that Barney Miller guy did to his holiness, I can't believe I'm defending his holiness, but I, whatever. Okay, our com or compare them, for we dare not make ourselves of the number or compare ourselves with some that commend themselves, but they measuring themselves by themselves and comparing themselves among themselves are not wise. How can ye believe? Ye who seek honor one from another, and seek not the honor that cometh from God only. And that which is highly esteemed among men is an abomination in the sight of God. Okay, but note that in verse 12 there, and now go back to Psalm 58 verse 2. Yea, in heart ye work wickedness, going after your covetousness, while never professing with your mouth that there isn't a God, but in works you deny him, ye weigh the violence of your hands in the earth. Well, everyone else does it. Why can't we? Huh? You're being too extreme. We got to be like the world in order to win the world. See, 
They weigh the violence of their hands in the earth. What is their standard of measurement? Earth. Sen earthly, sensual, devilish. That wisdom, that's a wisdom that isn't from above, but is what? From down here. So, the congregations, do they judge uprightly? According to this, they don't. Let's continue. Verses 3 on to verse 5. The wicked are estranged from the womb. They go astray as a, a strain. <laughs> they go astray as soon as they be born, speaking lies. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. Yea, hath God said, "That's the poison of a serpent." You know, the serpent that was more subtle than any beast of the field that the Lord God had made in Genesis chapter three. Okay, that old serpent, the devil, Satan. Okay. Their poison is like the poison of a serpent. They are like the deaf adder that stoppeth her ear, which will not hearken to the voice of charmers, charming never so wisely. Proverbs chapter 1. Don't follow a multitude to do evil. And um, when the majority is saying one thing, that's when you really ought to take a step back and be like, okay, everybody is saying this is the right thing, or everybody's saying this is right. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get over here by myself. You, you go ahead. And uh, I'm going to, hey, Lord, can you show me what you think? And I'm going to search the scriptures. And I'm going to see what God says. And y you know what happens Nine times out of ten, God says contrary to what the majority says. Nine times out of ten. I mean, it has to be like blatantly obvious where the two usually coincide. There was a time in the history of man where that wasn't always the case. But see, where we are at now is what we're dealing with now. And what once was ain't never going back to heretofore. Okay, Proverbs chapter 1, verses 10 on to verse 19. Proverbs chapter 1, verses 10 on to verse 19. My son, if sinners entice thee, consent thou not. If they say, come with us, let us lay wait for blood. Let us lurk privily for the innocent without cause. Let us swallow them up alive as the grave and whole as those that go down into the pit. We shall find all precious substance. We shall fill our houses with spoil. Cast in thy lot among us. Let us all have one purse. Hey, come on. Don't, don't be such a fuddy-duddy. Okay? You just want to be different. Uh, yeah, I do. I don't want to be part of this multitude. Okay? I don't want to be a part of that, this garbage called Christianity. And especially, I especially don't want to be labeled a, or put in part with this King James Bible-believing Christianity. Have you, have you, dear saint, have you actually taken a step back, you know, put your little defenses down, have you taken a step back and examined today what King James Bible believing Christianity really is? Have you examined it? Have you looked at it for what it actually is? Hmm? Have you seen the head figures thereof? Have you seen? Have you examined it for what it actually is? Have you? I'm asking you. Put, put your response in the comment section. Keep it clean or someone will get rid of it. Okay? Have you? Because when you look at what is being affixed 
as King James Bible-believing Christianity? How does it differ from Catholicism? Oh, Brett, look at it. Look at what it is. Look at what it has become. Okay? All right? Where is the difference? How do you mark the difference? And when you got people who are, who are coming along with another Jesus and another gospel, but yet calling themselves King James Bible-believing Christians? Hmm? Where is the distinction? Now, on the onset, the distinction is King James Bible-believing Christianity is supposed to adhere to the authorized version of the scriptures. And most do. And that, that's better than nothing. But see, in practice, In practice, especially at this time of the year, shh, shh, leave it alone. I just, I had to mention that. Shh, leave it alone. Where's the distinction? See, I, I always found it, I always found it very odd that the ones who ought to be defending and promoting distinction are the same ones who want to blur it. Or those who are, are, uh, who are on the surface about distinction, but yet want to yoke themselves up with Rome once a month. Once a month in a certain time of year, excuse me. Okay? There, that's enough of that. <coughs> okay? My son... Verse 13. <coughs> Walk not thou in the way with them. Refrain thy foot from their path. For their feet run to evil and make haste to shed blood. Surely in vain the net is spread in the sight of any bird, and they lay wait for their own blood. They lurk privily for their own lives. So are the ways of everyone that is greedy of gain. <laughs> <coughs> which taketh away the life of the owners thereof. Excuse me. <coughs> Beg your pardon. Like I said, like I said, it's been over a week since I've gotten sick, and now I'm even more feeling sick like I did last week. Damn you Jesuits to hell. Damn you Jesuits to hell. Devils. Got no love for the Jesuits. Damn them Jesuits to hell. You heard me right. And I've got I've got no problem saying that about the Jesuit order. None. And if that offends you, you must be Catholic. Back to Psalm 58, verse 6. Break their teeth, O God, in their mouth. Break out the great teeth of the young lions, O Lord. Micah, chapter 3. <coughs> Micah, chapter 3. Micah 3, verses 5 on to verse 7. Thus saith the Lord concerning the prophets that make my people err, that bite with their teeth and cry peace, and he that putteth not into their mouths, they even prepare war against him. Therefore night shall be unto you, that ye shall not have a vision, <coughs> and it shall be dark unto you, that ye shall not divine. And the sun shall go down over the prophets, and the day shall be dark over them. Then shall the seers be ashamed, and the diviners confounded. Yea, they shall all cover their lips, for there is no answer of God. The true God. But there is a God that is answering these Christians' prayers. I wonder which one's answering the prayers. Let's continue. 
in Psalm 58. Let them melt away as waters which run continually. When he bendeth his air, when he bendeth his bow to shoot his arrows, let them be as cut in pieces. And it's interesting too, you can make the comparison about how that when that man of sin, the son of perdition, is set forth, and he goes conquer, going forth conquering and conquer, he has a bow, but no arrow. He uses other people's uh, ammunition instead of his own. Very interesting. Very interesting. As a snail which melteth. Eh, escargot, huh? That's pretty tasty, actually. Let every one of them pass away, like the untimely birth of a woman, that they may not see the sun. This is talking about people who present to you another Jesus and another gospel for our instruction in righteousness. Obviously, this is talking about, okay? These backslidden, compromising congregations that are more concerned about public opinion than truth, that are more consor concerned about feelings than facts, okay? Do you think my brother, my dear, sweet young brother, who has kicked me in the stones a couple of times, do you think he was more concerned about my feelings or the facts? Because he had at heart my feelings. He was concerned to hurt me with facts. Just like my brother Alexander Hartley. Okay. Uh, he, he's kicked me in the stones many a times. Why? Because he loves me as his brother. Okay. A brother will do that out of love. Not because they want to put a notch in their belt. Okay? All right? But Christianity, they're more concerned about your feelings. We don't want to offend people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. As, the, as a snail which melteth, let every one of them pass away, like the untimely birth of a womb, that they may not see the sun. Before your pots can feel the thorns, he shall take them away as with a whirlwind, both living and in his wrath. Verses 10 and 11. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. Now in the Proverbs, it says that we are not to rejoice when our enemies stumbleth. Okay, there are some out there who have taken uh, issue with that uh, and are like, oh, I'm so glad so and so fell and whatnot. We as saints, we don't revel in the fact that so and so fell. What we revel in is the righteous judgment of God. That's what we revel in. For example, that one guy who I hate from England, okay? If I were to find out that he had fallen because or whatever, I wouldn't rejoice in the fact that he had fallen, even though he would do that uh, if I did. Okay, he, he'd have a party and he'd smoke even more cigarettes than he does already, okay? But um, he, he, he would rejoice at me falling. I wouldn't rejoice at him falling, but see, the point is, I would revel, be gracious and glad in God's judgment. See, that is what you and I as saints revel in, okay? I, I don't want to see one of my enemies go to hell. I don't, okay? They're going to go to hell, but see... I revel in the fact that God's judgment is just. And see, that's where you and I, saints, that's what we revel in. We don't revel in that Joe Schmo, uh, the devil, got dunk thrown all over him because he's an idiot. It's like, no, 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 no. What we revel in is God's perfect, righteous judgment has come to pass. That is what we revel in. God, Lord, thou art just, worthy, 
fair and equal, we're not. And your judgment has exposed so-and-so. That's what we revel in. We don't revel in their misfortune. No. No. There have been some people out there have tried to say, well, yeah, revel in their misfortune. So then we'd be just like the enemy, huh? No. No, 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 no. No, you're, you're misinterpreting that in Proverbs. I don't care who you think you are, okay? No, we don't revel in their misfortune. We revel in God's righteous judgment, okay? I know for some of us that's hard to grasp, okay? Like, you know, when we find out that the wicked go to hell, Lord, praise you for your righteous judgment. Okay? Praise you that you are just right and equal, equal, and you have, you know, your judgment has put him where he put himself. Okay? That's what we revel in. Like, praise you, Lord, for your righteous judgments. That's what we revel in. Not in the fact that Joe Schmo got whatever. Okay? That's evil. That's what they do. But we revel in God's perfect, righteous judgment. Okay? And there's nothing wrong with that. That's what we're supposed to do. <coughs> the righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. Mm -hmm. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. So that a man shall say, Verily there is a reward for the righteous. Verily he is a God that judgeth in the earth. And see, if you've got a problem with judgment, then how can you rejoice and find joy in God's judgment? Roll that around in your head a little bit. Those of you who don't judge me, every time you hear, especially a Christian, whenever you hear Christians say, don't judge me, okay, it's always, every single time, it's always to cover up a sin. Always, without exception. Okay, without exception. It's always to cover up a sin. Okay? Well, one moment. Proverbs 24. Proverbs 24, okay? Proverbs 24, verses 16 on to verse 20. For a just man falleth seven times and riseth up again, but the wicked shall fall into mischief. See, a just man falls, but the false fall away, okay? Rejoice not when thine enemy falleth, and let not thine heart be glad when he stumbleth, lest the Lord see it, and it displease him, and he turn away his wrath from him. Fret not thyself because of evil men, neither be thou envious at the wicked, for there shall no reward, for there shall be no reward to the evil man. The candle of the wicked shall be put out. Okay? And when you look back at Psalm fifty eight, verses ten and eleven again. The righteous shall rejoice when he seeth the vengeance. He shall wash his feet in the blood of the wicked. So that a man shall say, Verily there is a reward for the righteous. Verily he is a God that judgeth in the earth. See, we don't rejoice when our enemy falleth. But as we have already seen, we rejoice at God's righteous judgment against the wicked. That is what we rejoice in, okay? Or else, if we're rejoicing in them falling like that, we're, we're no different than the enemy ourselves, okay? It's like, you know, finding out that someone who lived a life as a devil and went to hell, it's like, praise you, Lord, for your judgment. Praise you. Thank you for being just. That's what we rejoice in, okay? There's nothing wrong as saints, when we find out, like, for example, um, uh, when, when Bill Gates dies, he's going to go to hell, okay? When Bill Gates dies, he's going to hell, 
Okay, what do we do? Lord, thank you for having your just, perfect, righteous judgment on that wicked man who rejected you all his life. Praise you, Lord, for your righteous judgment because Mr. Gates is going to hell, but when he dies and goes to hell, we as saints were like, Lord, praise you for your righteous judgment. Praise you for your righteous judgment. See? That's how that works. That's how that works. And see, someone who is afraid of true judgment doesn't want to hear that. See, I'm not afraid of true judgment. I'm not afraid of true judgment. Okay? You know why? Because I examine myself every single day. Okay? I examine myself through Scripture every single day. Do you? Do you? And see, us saints, we're not afraid of judgment. We're not. Because we know it's inevitable. We know it's inevitable. Someone who has a problem with judgment, how could they ever truly rejoice in God's righteous judgment? They can't. Because someone who has a problem with judgment, their standard, I can guarantee you, their standard is not here, but their standard is there themselves, not here. You understand how this works? So That is going to be it for this video. Thank you for watching this if you do. Hopefully this might help some of you. Um, hopefully. Uh, brethren, um, please, please keep your servant in prayer. Like I said, it's been over a week since I've been sick. And now... You get, you know, you get over one hurdle from this biological weapon that I've encountered only to, to inherit and to come across another. I'm sick of being sick. <laughs> but um, thank you for watching this if you do. I love you. Thank you for your prayers. Please keep us in your prayers. We need it. Please, please brethren, please keep... Keep yourselves in prayer, okay? Please, pray for one another. We need each other. We need our prayers. So, I'm going to get this uploaded. I love you, and we'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.